So, this recipe, you know, we have so many recipes for fudge that we all absolutely love. And we kindly got out of the habit of our old-fashioned fudge. Um, I can remember my grandma and even anybody in my family, as far as that goes, we never made fudge out of chocolate chips and sweetened condensed milk. It was always out of sugar, just plain sugar, and uh, Hershey's cocoa powder, baking powder. That's what the fudge was always made out of. This recipe is, is the old version, the old recipe that used to be on the back of the Hershey uh, cocoa uh, can for making fudge. And it's some of the best I ever eat. When I eat this, it always brings me back to Grandma because this was our fudge. Um, and I've even, I even have videos making fudge out of your chocolate chips and your sweet and condensed milk and, and all that. And they're so creamy and so good, but they're not your original Grandma's homemade chocolate fudge. And this is so good. So I want to come in and I want to share this recipe with y'all. Um, a lot of y'all probably already know this recipe, but there's a lot of y'all that probably don't. And if you ever get the chance to really want to get that, that taste of the old fashioned. And when I talk about this, I talk about it because it's a different, um, it's a different texture. It's a good texture, but it's a different texture. But Mostly it is how how rich and chocolate it is because it's not chocolate chips. It is your Hershey's uh, pow cocoa powder. And it's just, to me, it's the best because it tastes, it just has that original chocolate taste. So anyways, let's get started on our fudge. Um, there's a little bit more to it than maybe your, your two or three ingredient easy uh, throw together fudge, but let me tell you something. It's so worth it. Anything that was made by grandma or grandma's recipe, you know, it's always worth it. Now I'm going to call out my list of ingredients. And if you want to, you can stop it right now and get you a pen and paper and uh, write this down. We got three cups of sugar. Two third cups of Hershey's uh, baking cocoa. You can use regular or you can use the dark cocoa. An eighth of a teaspoon of salt. One and a half cups of milk. A fourth of a cup of butter, which is half a stick. One teaspoon of vanilla. And then you need to have a candy thermometer. For this candy to turn out right, you either need a thermometer or you want to do the cold water uh, test. And that's just a small amount of the mixture dropped into very cold water. And if it forms a soft ball and then flattens when you remove it from the water, then you know it's ready. I like to use the thermometers. I think my candies come out better when I use a good thermometer. This one right here is a good one. And uh, if you look on my Amazon store, I'll put one or two on there if you're interested. Now there's all kinds of different ones. You can buy them at Walmart in different places, but this is the ones that I like right here. Now, when you put your thermometer down in your pot, you wanna make sure that the bottom, the bulb part, the very bottom of your Thermometer is not touching the bottom of the pan because you won't get an accurate uh, temperature on your candy. I've got a heavy pot right here. This is a pot I got from Sam's Club. It's a food service pot. It's very thick, very heavy. It's, it's good for making candy. Um, I know uh, different stores. I never could find a good one at Walmart. Um, I'm sure there's some online stores you might find one, but like I said, this come from Sam's Club. Uh, Amazon probably has a few, but this is food service grade uh, pot here. So what we're going to do, this is a 2.75 
quart is what this is. I'm going to turn my heat on about medium high. You want to mix your three cups of sugar. Your two-thirds cup of Hershey's cocoa. Eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to just stir this a little bit. Now, when you're doing this, you want to use a wooden spoon. Just stir it around a little bit. Now I'm going to add my one and a half cups of milk. I'm using evaporated milk. Don't use sweetened condensed milk. That's a whole nother recipe. This is the old fashioned fudge and they didn't use sweetened condensed milk with that. And I should have waited to put that in there after I got my stuff in here, but that'll be okay. We'll get it mixed up. Like I said, I've got it over medium high heat. I want to bring this up to softball stage. Now that's 234, but I like to uh, go a little bit higher on mine. I like to go to 240. I'm just a rebel that way. But first what you're going to, have to do is you're going to have to bring this to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, after it comes to a boil, you're going to quit stirring it. And you're going to let that temperature come up. Now, I know people think, well, it don't matter what you stir it with or this or that. But you know what? Sometimes it does. Sometimes that's why your candy turns out and why sometimes it don't. So that's all we got in our pot for now. I'm going to get this mixed up as good as I can. I've got an 8x8 eight eight square pan here that I've got full on and I've got it buttered. Now, the one thing I do know is you can't double this recipe and make it come out as very good. This is one of them recipes that you need if you're wanting to make a bunch of it, you're just going to have to make several batches. Now, I'm, there may be somebody out there that says, well, I've made a double batch. I've never made a double batch yet that turned out as good as a single batch. Don't mean it can't be done. I just haven't done it. So right up here is about softball stage, but I'm going to go to 240, but that's not going to happen until this comes to a full boil. You don't want to use a whisk or anything like that. You just want to use a heavy pan and a wooden spoon. Okay, y'all see how it's come to a rolling boil. I'm going to let it do this without stirring it till it gets on up here to where I want it. And I want it up here to about 240. Softball stage is 234, but you know me, I've got to do it different. Now don't let it boil over. If you think you need to, turn it down just a little bit, but keep that boil till it gets up to softball stage. Okay, if you can see, we're pretty much there at the softball stage. I'm not going to go 240 because the way it looks, it's ready. So, I'm going to turn my stove off. I'm going to pull it off the heat just a little bit. And what I'm going to do now, I have not stirred this the whole time that it's been boiling. I got it in my spoon. 
my spoon. I'm going to put my half a stick, which is a fourth a cup of butter. And I'm just going to plop it in there just like that. Now, I'm still not going to stir this. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to leave it alone. Now, what I want this to do, I want it to come down. I want it to cool off before I stir it. I want it to come down to about, I don't know, about 110. Just let it rest. So it's about lukewarm, about 110. Then that's when we come in and we start stirring the, the pooey out of it. But you want it to cool down, which is going to take just a little while. If you want to, you can put this out on your back porch where it's cool and let it cool down. Don't put it in your fridge. Never put anything hot like this in your fridge. So just leave it alone. Let it get down to about 110. Okay, it's gotten down to, it was about 114 degrees, and I'm going to get with it. I'm going to start just whipping the full out of it. And this may take me a little while. And what you want to do is you want to stir this hard until it loses its glossiness. It's going to kind of get a, a dull color. And you can see that some of it has stuck on the side of my, of my pot. So I know it's going to set up good. But I'm just going to whoop and whoop and whoop this. You see how shiny it is? You want it to lose that shininess. Okay, it is starting to lose some of its shininess, not completely. It's starting to thicken up good. And I'm going to put my... A good handful of nuts. And I've been whipping this for about a minute. I'm going to go another minute before I put it in my pan. Okay, we're going to pour it in our pan. And see how it's thickened up. Now your pot's not going to be real pretty after this, I can tell you. But just smelling this takes me back to my grandma's kitchen and her homemade chocolate fudge. This was the only fudge we ever known. No chocolate chip fudge, no sweet and condensed fudge. Milk fudge. This was the fudge. Right here. I'm going to spread this out in the pan real good. And ain't none of that in that pot or that spoon going to go to waste. As you know who's going to be a licking that spoon in that pot. Just kind of spread it out. It don't have to be exactly even. Just pretty close. It's already starting to set up. And like I said, this is your fudge that if you're wanting to send in the mail to a different state, a different country or whatever. This is your fudge that's going to hold up. This is your fudge that's going to travel good. And uh, it can sit at room temperature all day long. If you're wanting to serve it at a party or something. It's one of those fudge that you can put in a candy tin. And uh, give it to your neighbors or your friends. And you don't have to worry to death about weather. If it's going to melt or not. Because a lot of our fudges that we're making that we absolutely love do not set up like this one does. To where you can mail it, send it, and give it as gifts. Oh, they're good. Believe me. But they just don't set up as hard as this does. Grandma's old-fashioned. 
chocolate fudge. Okay, let's see how good this fudge set up. I'm going to take it out of the 8x8 eight eight pan there. I'll bring down the sides. And you see it's already easy to work with. See if I can get y'all a little bit closer where you can see. And you see how well it has set up. I should have got me a bigger serrated knife, but this one's going to do good. And I'll cut it. And there you go. You can hear it. And see here how it's set up. Really, really good. I hope y'all enjoyed this, this recipe. Let me bring y'all back so y'all can see it on the plate. There we go. Grandma's old-fashioned Hershey cocoa fudge. This is the fudge that you can always count on that's going to set up and that you can give as a gift because it's not going to melt. It's not going to be your sticky fudge that, uh, that if you stacked it, it would stick together. This right here, you can see how well it sets up. This is your fudge that you can box up and send to somebody and not have to really worry about it. The only thing you might worry about is somebody else getting hold of it and eating it. <laughs> Be the only worry. And it does make quite a bit. But like I said, don't double the recipe. It just usually don't work out. Uh, just make you a couple of single recipes. It does take a little bit more time than your two ingredient chocolate chip recipe. But this is your tried and true grandma's recipe. And we all know that grandma's always right. I hope y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving and are ready to get into the Christmas holidays. I'm going to be doing recipes on candy and cookies and appetizers. I know I said that earlier, and I'm repeating myself, but I just want y'all to know what's going to be coming up at Whippoorwill Holler. And uh, there it is. That is Grandma's chocolate fudge. It will never, never fail you. And it tastes wonderful. And you can see, you can see the walnuts in there. So y'all try this recipe. Get you a good thermometer or do the cold water test for softball stage and make you some fudge. Make some fudge for somebody. Make it for your neighbors. Make it for your friends, your family, your honey, whoever. Y'all come back and see us. God bless everybody. We'll see you in a couple of days.